My name is Mitch Jackson. I was just on Chad Bars raising the bar. If you don't know what Bomb Bomb, StreamYard, and what snow skiing and social media have in common, then you got to watch the show. This is going to be dynamite. It was dynamite because I was just on the show and I enjoyed every minute of it. Hit play, watch, and reach out to me if you have any questions. Better yet, reach out to Chad Barr if you want your questions answered correctly. Well, good morning or afternoon, wherever you are in the world, everyone. I tell you, I'm excited here today to be with one of my favorite people, uh, Mitch Jackson. I met Mitch several years ago, and when it comes to both the creation of amazing content, being prolific on the web and social media, Mitch, Mitch is the guy. So in addition to Mitch Jackson being a 2009 Orange County Trial Lawyer of the Year, and actually 2013 California Litigation Lawyer of the Year, He's also one of the most well-known active trial lawyers, lawyers on social media. He's been profiled in best-selling marketing books and dozens of publications and platforms, including Inc., Mashable, and the Wall Street Journal. And during the past several years, Mitch has presented cutting-edge business legal marketing techniques at Tony Robbins Business Mastery with his good friend, uh, David Meerman Scott. Mitch is the founder of Global Legal Minds Mastermind Group, which I happen to be a member of, amazing group on Facebook, which is his private group, and I encourage some of you to consider joining. He's also written a new book, uh, not so new, but uh, it's been published, uh, I think, about a year or so ago, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Social Media for Business Owners, Professionals, and Entrepreneur, which was number one bestsellers on Amazon and the top number one release uh, in two separate categories. And I have to, uh, to also admit as a disclaimer that here's the book, and I happen to be one of the contributors to one of the chapters among many other amazing people, of course, including Mitch, who has written to the book as well. And he's also, uh, his, his friends know him as the streaming lawyers, as, uh, and you can stay connected at streaming lawyers. So, Welcome this morning or this afternoon, uh, Mitch. It's great to be here with you. Chad, thank you very much for having me. And um, that was a very kind and generous introduction. Um, and I'm honored to be here with you because when it comes to marketing, when it comes to branding, when it comes to doing all the things we're going to be talking about, I look to you as an example of how to do things the right way, especially when I'm sharing new approaches with my professionals in the mastermind lawyers, doctors, CPAs, you came in, and I don't know if you remember this, but about a year ago, I had you come in as a guest, and we do live videos about once a week, and we bring guests in, and Chad shared a, an approach that all of us can use when we're doing a live video to really connect, build rapport, uh, empower our audience to make a particular decision, and make our point, and Chad, that was one of our members favorite episodes is when you took the time to, to, to stop in and say hi and with respect to the book look at this this is real world you guys check this out here's the book this is next edition there's a lot going on wow. in the world of social media okay and one of the reasons i don't mind tooting my own horn when it comes to this book is i had people like you i had 46 other experts from around the world contribute chapters to this book. I think I wrote eight of the 52 mm -hmm. chapters. So when I say it's a really, really good book, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the people that came in and shared their expertise like you did, um, like people like Bob Berg, who talked about having the right social media mindset, having the right go-giver mindset, yes. um, just to a series of experts. And I think that's what makes this book so good. And it's more relevant today than it was a year ago mm. when it was released because of what we're going through right now with the COVID-19 situation. Everybody right now is using Zoom and live video and social media and digital platforms to build relationships and to service their clients. And if you're not using the approaches that we'll probably talk about today and the 15 or 16 chapters in the book on how to communicate, how to tell a story, I mean, Chad, I'll ask you right now, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but most professionals, most trial lawyers think that the most important thing they can learn how to do in court and on social media 
is to tell a good story. And while that's true, do you know what's even more important than telling a good story? Bear with us. Okay. What's more important about, and I think you know the answer, what's more important than telling a good story than just entertaining your audience is sharing content in a way and telling your story in a way where you're empowering your audience, your audience of one, your audience of 12 in the courtroom, or your audience of 1,000 on social media to take a desired action. You're giving them permission to take that next step, whether it's to buy a product or service, whether it's to reach out and set an appointment, whether it's to connect with you at your blog or website. Storytelling is great, but telling a story in a way where you're empowering your, your audience to take that next step, that's even more important. And I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball. I love this. I love this whole mindset of how you share this. My simple benchmark, and I talk about it quite often in my podcast, in my writing, my simple benchmark to gauge whether a piece of content is good, not so good, or amazing. When I listen, read, or watch something, is my reaction to that piece of content, so what, I've heard it many times before, or is my reaction, wow, I never thought about it this way. This really is motivating me. This has mobilized me to take action. If that piece of content, whatever is the format, whether it's video such as this one or a podcast or an article, mobilize me to take action, engages me emotionally, it makes me say, I never thought about it this way. That's what I urge my clients to think about how to create this piece of content that actually does that for, for the listener, for the viewer. Well, you, you have the bar pretty high. Okay, you're raising the bar when you do that. And it puts a lot of pressure on the rest of us to do the same thing. And that's a uh, intellectually protected term, you guys. So be careful about using that term. Um, but you know what's interesting is sharing helpful content, uh, answering questions that clients may have, um, showing your human side, especially as a lawyer, as a professional. Look, I'm not in a suit and tie. I'm gonna work out as soon as we're done. I'm here in Southern California. I'm trying to get in. You know, I've been running a lot, Chad, and I, mm -hmm. now I'm not going outside. We're social distancing, but I've got a stair stepper down in the man cave, and I'm going to get on that for about an hour, hour and a half. But showing your human side so that people um, can connect with you and relate to you and hopefully know, like, and trust you. And what I found is, for me, <clears throat> and I, I shouldn't say this on your show, but for me, lowering the bar just a little bit and giving myself permission <clears throat> excuse me, to put out content that's not perfect and to put mm -hmm. out content that's 80% what I want because I'm a busy guy. I got a lot going on, but I can hop on a live video. I can answer some questions and then hop back off. And there are consumers out there that have been looking for that answer and it's two in the morning and they can't sleep and they're not sure what to do. And they hop on one of the digital platforms and they come across my video or my blog post or my podcast and we answer you know that question and it 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 solves their need it allows them to go back to bed and get a good night's sleep but it also in their mind they're connecting with someone else in their life me who happens to be a lawyer who happens to obviously i enjoy what i'm doing mm -hmm. and i'm here to answer their questions and I think that share, showing your human side and sharing your human side on social media, mm. oftentimes that, that does include some of the imperfections and the mistakes yes. and uh, the awkward side, side of things. You know, some of my beach runs before COVID-19 hit, I love grabbing the uh, GoPro and I actually attach it to this and I'll run with the GoPro and something will come up and I'll start talking about a breaking news story or something I'll be doing uh, later on this week at the office, something that I think my audience would be interested in. It's not the best video in the world. The audio is not perfect. Oftentimes I'll get back and wonder, why did I have that big piece of sweat sticking off my big forehead with a piece of sea salt there? But you know what? Those are the videos that people relate to, watch, share, comment on, and engage. And uh, that's been my secret. Once I give myself permission, Chad, to uh, keep that bar high, okay, absolutely, and create the best content I can, I added another condition to that. And that is create the best content that I can create under the circumstances I find myself in at the moment or in the yeah, moment. I love so this. So there's, right, right? I love this. 
You know, my observation, and I wrote about this for a long time, my observation is I look at some of the top thought leaders out there versus the ones that aim to, to expand or strengthen, I should say, their thought leadership. That the top of thought leaderships out there, the ones I observe, the most successful ones, are all prolific publishers of remarkable content. And they don't stop creating this kind of content, whether it's books and podcasts and videos and online learning and all this amazing stuff. And then when I look at you, I can say there are you, one of those top thought leaders out there who's creating prolific content all the time. So I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about that. How does a successful lawyer that I believe a profession that probably most of your colleagues out there are not leveraging social media, are not leveraging powerful content, are not leveraging uh, technology. How does a successful lawyer like you all of a sudden become an expert and a prolific publisher of remarkable content on social media? Well, I just, I just read a book and then the next morning I woke up, problem solved, here I am. Right. You know, it's, it's funny because I started my practice in, in 1986. And when we started, uh, the internet as we know it, you know, wasn't around for most of us. Um, our first website we, we, we put up in about 1996. That's if you mm -hmm. use the Wayback Machine, that's what you'll find. I think we were online before then. Mm -hmm. But um, I realized because of the cases coming in, even back then through the internet, that there was something, something to this internet thing. Yes. And so we continued the journey with uh, bulletin boards and blog posts. And then when social media came out, uh, I'm a social guy. And so I immediately embraced social media. Fast forward to today. I mean, it's been, you know, 20 years, 20 years of mistakes, right? 20 years of testing, 20 years of trying to figure out how to do what it is I want to do. And I think for me, Chad, it goes back to growing up on a guest ranch in Tucson, Arizona. And I am, I am going to get to the answer to your question, but this is relevant. So you guys, I grew up on a ranch in Tucson where we had people flying in from all over the world to play cowboy. And, you know, we had 30 horses and we'd go on two rides a day. And, you know, it was a ranch resort type of scenario. We had people like Walt Disney, John Wayne, uh, Rock Hudson. I mean, a lot of celebrities, Morley Safer from 60 Minutes, uh, just a lot of really well-known people from around the world. And so growing up in that environment, I watched my mom and dad, neither one with a college education, uh, but two very smart individuals. I watched them interact with the guest each and every night, each and every year, the guests would come back over and over and over. And what I watched my mom and dad do was have conversations with our guest that didn't have a whole lot to do with business, but they had everything to do with how are you doing? How's the family? Mm. You know, very personal relationships. And what I noticed was when I, being a first college graduate, my immediate family, certainly the first one to go to law school, what I noticed when I started practicing law, Chad, was when I tried to be like all the other lawyers in town, mm. I, it was hard for me to stand out. They were well-funded law firms. They had great referral sources. And here I am just starting my practice, didn't know anybody in Orange County, California, other than a few friends in law school. And it was a tough couple of years because I was doing what everyone else was doing and what I thought everyone else was doing. And when I eventually kind of gave myself permission to take a step away and approach business development and the branding and marketing of my law firm from a completely different perspective, they had more to do with playing basketball down on Laguna Beach at Maine Beach, more to do with riding my motocross bike out at the tracks with other lawyers and a few judges. It had more to do with me back in the day shooting video at Mammoth, which is a local ski area um, here in California, than it did spending time at the evening bar association meetings. What I started to do is connect with other lawyers and human beings that had similar interest as me. And we all like referring cases and doing business with each other. Mm. What I learned from watching my mom and dad, what I learned from my early days of practicing law and brought into social media and digital is that's where the magic happens by sharing your hobbies, your interests and your passions and connecting with other people who have similar interests, hobbies and passions as you do. And, and maybe that involves a court case. Maybe it involves politics. Maybe it involves digital marketing, motocross, paddleboarding, whatever it might be. That's the content you see me enjoy sharing. And it connects us as human beings. And when it connects us as human beings, guess what happens? 
when somebody needs a lawyer, when somebody has a legal question, they either reach out to my firm or they tell their family or friends, listen, there's somebody who I connected with on Facebook or there's someone who's tweeting every single day who seems like, he seems like a pretty good guy. I think he's mm -hmm. doing okay as far as handling the cases that he's handling. You might want to reach out to him. His name is Mitch Jackson. Reach out to him or his partner, Lisa Wilson. In fact, he's married. He talks about being married to his partner. They met in law school. And it's that human aspect that gets people to take the time to reach out to us. And that's where the dance starts. So it's been a 20 to 30, it's been a lifelong dance mm -hmm. that comes full circle to, to, to today with you. And I was telling you before we went live, I had a big interview last night with uh, Jack Newton, who's the founder and CEO of Clio, which is a cloud-based platform that I use to manage my practice. Um, and I made a mistake at the beginning of the show. I didn't hit the volume button while I was introducing Jack. And after all the experience of doing live streams, after all the interviews that I've done with some pretty well-known people, after all the times I've been interviewed, I made a rookie mistake. Now, having said that, it's a new platform and we're all kind of getting, getting to know what buttons to push and not push. But what we did, Chad, is we had a great interview. It was just a 45 second hiccup, but we went back this morning and we cleaned it up and we repurposed the content and put That's it great. back out there. And the content we shared this morning is getting more play and more feedback and engagement than the original content last night. You know, you can't be afraid to fail. You can't be afraid to make mistakes. I think the key in everything we're doing is just don't make the same mistake. <laughs> twice on the, you know, about the same thing. And then you're good to go. It's a long answer. I, Sorry about that. You I asked see, a lawyer <laughs> question, Chad, and I'm not going to stop talking. I see you both as a great connector out there uh, from our previous experience of working together and also uh, that human interface. Two people look at technology for technology's sake, and I see technology for the human sake of making connection, building partnership, building relationship. It's amazing. So I want to segue to a different question. Obviously, you work with very successful entrepreneurs and some that perhaps struggle or strive to become more successful. Um, what would you say are the key distinguishing factors from your experience from those who are extremely successful to those who strive to increase their success? So the answer is fairly simple, and I think it comes down to three things. Uh, number one, it's, it comes down to taking action. Mm. And, you know, I know everyone's probably heard that before, but, but it's true. Um, it's one thing to know what you need to do. It's another thing to take action, massive, consistent action on a daily basis to do what it is you want to do. I think that's key. I've helped start up and I've represented over the years just hundreds and hundreds of different startup or early development co companies, right? Whether starting them or litigating on their behalf. And without exception, what I've noticed with companies that are successful as opposed to those starting off in good faith, but it just didn't work out. The consistent factor with success has been the taking action, seeing what works, figuring out what doesn't, taking a step back, adjusting, and then moving forward and continuing mm. to do so until you reach your goal. That's number one. Number two, every successful company that I've watched or been involved with has had good legal counsel in their corner. Mm. This is complicated stuff, whether you're a corporation, a limited liability company, maximizing tax benefits, complying with regulations. It's pretty important that you have that stuff covered with a good lawyer or law firm in your state who you can trust. And then number three, I think accounting and CPA, having that element covered also so that you're making good short and long-term financial business decisions. I think, yes, you can, you can start and build a successful company without those three elements, but that would be the exception and not the norm. So it's not a sexy answer and it's not something that a lot of people want to hear, but I think, executing and taking action, having your legal stuff covered, having your financial stuff covered. You know, when I, um, I tell a story a couple of years ago, I gave a closing argument in a case and got a uh, 
a seven thing, a, a multi-million dollar verdict in the case. And one of the young lawyers, they'll come in and watch us give our opening and closing, opening statements and closing arguments. So when I came out of the courtroom, when the jury went back to deliberate, one of the young lawyers that was watching said, Mitch, how did you know to shift and focus on that issue uh, that I watched you do about halfway through? How did you know that was something you needed to hammer in on? And, and the way you did it, why did you approach it from that mindset with that level of emotion? And why were you over on the right side of the jury and you kind of didn't pay attention to the left side of the jury? Hmm. And what I told him was, you know, I don't know, 30 years of, of doing it, 30 years of trying cases, 30 years of reading people and, and getting, understanding body language, understanding what the issues in the case were. I think what he wanted me to tell him was to give him a magic pill. Interesting. Like, if you do this, or if you download the app on my phone right now, you right. can do this too. And the reality is, is the only way I was able to pull that off was based upon trying a lot of cases, working my ass off because I, wore, I, out, I out hustle my opponents. That's my secret in the courtroom. I'm certainly never the smartest guy in the courtroom, Chad. Mm. Okay, I'm the first to admit that. I'm not. I've never been accused of being the brightest bulb in the lamp, but there's one thing that I can tell you 99 times out of 100, I'm the hardest working person in that courtroom uh, And when it comes to lawyers. And that's been my sick secret is just being prepared, coming in, speaking from the heart, telling stories, empowering my jury, being that leader in the courtroom where by the time we pick a jury before we even give an opening statement, I want that jury to look to me as the person who's going to help them find the answer to the question. If there's uh, an objection in the courtroom, I want that jury all looking at me, not the judge, to see what's gonna happen next. Now they need to look at the judge. He or she is the one that says sustained or overruled. But when you get the jury looking at you when opposing counsel objects, that tells you you have control of the courtroom. And then what I do is I'll purposefully look up at the judge so that they give that judge their full attention when ruling on the objection. That's when you know you've got the jury, uh, you know, looking at the case through your lens. Mm -hmm. And then it's your job not to lose the case. I find myself smiling the whole time you speak because it so resonates with me, your message, your words of wisdom. And you're absolutely right. Uh, one of the biggest compliments I got from my, one of my clients, he said, how the heck did you get so smart? For, for being such a young man. And I said, you know, the honest to goodness truth, number one, I've been doing it for many, many years. Yeah. And I've been fortunate to work with some of the smartest clients in the world. And their smarts, their wisdom rubs off on me by me just asking questions, hearing the answer, especially when I create this amazing content. Uh, so getting a smart did not happen overnight just because, <laughs> just by virtue of being born. But it takes, as you said, years of hard work trying different things. And that leads me to the next question. One of the things I trademark, and I highly believe in trademarking our intellectual property, or of course, copywriting it as well. One of the things, are, one of our, my trademark is creating global digital empires. And what I mean by that, to, from my perspective, digital empire is the remarkable manifestation of our wisdom, our knowledge, our experience through remarkable content in a variety of formats, whether it's videos or podcasts or articles or books, such as and other plugs, such as this amazing book Thank here. Thank you. Uh, from your perspective, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, to get the answer uh, as you see. What constitutes, in your mind, the, uh, the manifestation of remarkable content? First of all, what sure. is it from your perspective, great content? And how do you think about creating? You, you talked about it earlier today, but how do you think about constantly creating um, good to great to amazing content? So it's everything you just said, and it's using some of the principles and approaches that you've shared with me in the past, okay? And with my Legal Minds Mastermind group that helps create good content. It's, it's using the approaches that Carmine Gallo uh, wrote about in his book, Talk Like Ted. Carmine interviewed 200 top TED speakers. What makes them so good, so popular, so powerful, so persuasive? And Carmine shared a chapter in the book. He wrote the chapter just for social media. And all the contributing authors in the book did this as a favor, okay, which means the world to me. Um, but what Carmine talked about and what he talked about in this book, Talk Like Ted, is 
for the lawyers out there, for professionals out there, keep things entertaining. I mean, entertain people, right? Don't just sit behind your desk and be boring. Uh, have some ex excitement and some mm. enthusiasm in what you say. So there's three components, there's three keys to answering your question. The first thing is I like entertaining, engaging content. And that's mm. through storytelling. It's through, it's maybe by starting your presentation halfway through the story with a punchline and then going back in time and starting. So you're immediately capturing the attention of your audience. You're entertaining them uh, with your content, whether it's a podcast, a video, whether it's a written blog post, that's number one. Number two, I, I, what Carmine recommends is to have your content be unique. Mm. Have it be something that's coming from you. Don't try to be like somebody else, whether you're writing, speaking, talking into a microphone. Um, Create unique content. And if you're true to yourself, if you follow your human compass, there's no one else like you, Chad. There's no one else like me, good or bad. That's just the way it is, right? So if we embrace who we are as human beings and create unique content, it's going to connect with people out there. You're not going to connect with everyone, nor do you want to. Right. But unique content then goes over and rolls over to the third element, which is creating memorable content, remarkable content, to use your term. Um, by doing those three things, especially as a professional on Zoom, on a podcast, in a blog post, you're creating a scenario where you'll, you'll be maximizing your ability to connect with the reader, the listener, or the viewer. You're maximizing the chances of them sharing it out to their audience, which frankly is the power of social and digital, mm -hmm. and you're maximizing the chances of building relationships. I think professionals that think they're marketing, they should be marketing on social media and on digital, they've got it wrong. What, in my opinion, what you wanna do is you wanna build relationships, and through those relationships, everything else follows. And it's a long-term play. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But let's take a step back because when we talk about raising the bar or uh, doing things the way I'm doing it, I don't want this to be overwhelm overwhelming for people. I, I honestly believe that anybody that embraces social and digital and, and follows your approaches or follows some of the approaches in my book, including your chapter, I think there's a future there. And what I mean by that, is my audio okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. What I think about that is what I mean about that. See, I can't even put a sentence together, you guys, yet this is working for me. So if it works for me, it'll work for you. Um, think of social media, think of digital, think of what we're talking about, almost like snow skiing. Okay. Mm. Anybody can go down to the ski shop in town and buy a pair of boots, buy a pair of skis, get a ski rack, put everything on your car and drive up to the ski resort you can walk out, get on the lift, go up to the top of the mountain to a black diamond run, which is the most mm -hmm. difficult run on the mountain <clears throat> and start down. And if you've never skied before, you're not gonna have a good experience, okay? Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, a lot of these platforms allow you to become part of their platform for free. Just because it's free, just because you can do it, doesn't mean you should just hop on and ski down that digital black diamond run. What I would suggest is just like in snow skiing, spend some time to learn how to go about what, you know, how to go about sharing a tweet on Twitter or posting a post on LinkedIn. Take some lessons, read books, read blog posts, watch videos. Um, understand that as with snow skiing, once you take a couple of lessons and you know how to snow plow, it's been so long, I think that's what it's called. And I skis, but it's been a long time uh, since I learned. Once you understand the fundamentals and the basics, then it's repetition and it's practice. And before you know it, you'll be going from the bunny slope yes. to the black diamond run. And three takeaways, I think, from me about today's podcast and live video, we broke the book down into three sections, Chad. And I think this is critically important. It's like skiing. It's like having the right size ski boots, the right bindings, the right skis, and the right slope. In social media, it comes down to three things. You have to understand the mindset. The mindset of social media is number one. You want to have a go-giver mindset. You want to mm. give, 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 add value. Don't ask for anything in exchange. 
just keep giving and adding value. And, and that's the easy part, okay? So once you understand that mindset, the next step with social media is understanding the personalities of the platforms. The personality of Twitter is different than TikTok. LinkedIn's different than Instagram. What may work on Facebook may not work real well in a blog post. So you want to understand and appreciate the subtle differences with each platform. This is not rocket science. It's not complicated, but each platform is a little bit different. Very Once well you understand too. the personality of the platform, the last step of the three steps, so we have mindset, personalities, the third step, third step is being able to communicate effectively on that particular platform. Understand who your audience is, understand the message that you want to share, understand um, the messages are shared in different ways on different platforms. And once you know how to tell a story and empower your audience to take action that respects the personality of the platform, then you're good to go. You're ready to ski, you know, every, every slope available on the mountain. And when you get really good, just like in the ski areas where you learn how to uh, shoot the lift line and work your way around the mountain to the shortest line of the day, we all know, uh, for example, at Heavenly Valley in Tahoe, if you ski the Nevada side in the morning and the California side in the afternoon, you can avoid a lot of lift lines. It has to do with crowd size, knowledge and the sun. Well, the same thing applies to social media. Once you learn these basics, then by putting in the time, uh, the, the upside's unlimited. I, I will say that uh, what's really fun is when I see professionals, Chad, jump onto a platform where you don't find other professionals. So for example, I jumped on TikTok uh, I don't know, three or four months ago, right? And by the way, my kids are like, oh, dad, I can't believe you're on TikTok my TikToks exploded. I mean, it was crazy. And what I did is instead of dancing and singing on TikTok, and I'm not very good at either one of those, what I did is just hopped on and shared either uh, TikToks or short videos, 15 second video, 30 second video, uh, 60 second video. And what I started doing is sharing 60 second videos on my favorite trial moment, what I learned in law school, the biggest mistake I see people make when starting a business. If there's a breaking news story, um, I'll share, you know, this just happened. Here are three things everyone needs to think about. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a business law TikTok account and it really has picked up some traction. I didn't know how it was gonna work out when I started. It could have been a complete failure, a complete bust, and that's okay. But I had some fun with the TikToks and, um, and it's really taken off. So I encourage everyone to kind of push their limits, push their boundaries, have some fun with the platforms. And then once you do everything that we just talked about, this is where everyone drops the ball. They, they create content and then they forget about it. Mm -hmm. And I think what's critically important on social media is the social side of the media. In other words, spend time engaging and answering questions exactly. and following up with additional related blog posts and cross posting a blog post that you share today with a tweet that you sent out six months ago and you're sharing links back and forth. You're engaging, you're, you're, you're having a relationship with your audience. That to me is where I do spend a lot of time, Chad, and that's where I've gotten the most bang for my buck with respect to speaking engagements, with respect to uh, clients, paid clients, when it comes to meeting people like you. This isn't just because we exchanged a couple of tweets. This is because we both worked at having a relationship yeah. and, and helping each other along and being there for each other. And I think when people start doing that, regardless of what you do for a living, that's where the magic happens. And, and that's frankly where the fun starts. Very well put. Thank you for all of this and thank you for all that you do and all the wisdom you share. By the way, just as a side note, you're talking about number three and I, I saw you kind of focusing on making the number three and I remember being in my studio. It's almost like this kind of a game, the old game where you need to focus on delivering the message, making sure you look good. And I'm in front of my camera creating some content and I'm really focusing into the message and I go, number two, <laughs> oh yeah. number two uh, what this isn't two <laughs> believe me so, if i can it, you know what's interesting is um everyone's on live video right now right we're using zoom to talk to our clients to market our products and services to have conversations <laughs> like this 
what a great opportunity for people to work on their video skills, to understand right. uh, how movement is so important when we're on video. This is, this is artificial movement. I'm purposefully making sure my hands are coming up, paying attention to what's in the background. Exactly. Right. Paying attention. There's no dirty dishes. There's no un unfolded laundry. You know, no, I saw Chad's guitar before we went live and it was something that started a conversation. I wish I had the ability to play the guitar. And I love your background, Chad. It's that's what you want. You want to pay attention to not being, you know, too close and right. not being just a little dot in a live video. There's so many dynamics that go into creating an experience. And every time we're on live video, every time we're creating a podcast, we're creating an experience. And I would like to see more professionals be aware of that experience. Absolutely. Not just rely upon a, uh, uh, a quick and easy green screen background. You know, I've got an Ecamm green screen background that took some time to learn, but I, I like the quality of it and it works. And by the way, and I know, I don't know if we're wrapping this up, but I want to show you something. If you come into our office, this is our office right here. Mm -hmm. I made a different screen. So when you come off the elevator, you'll walk over and see the receptionist. So yeah. we're actually use a photo of our, of our lobby so that when clients show up, they're like, oh, I, rec I feel like I've been to your office before. Isn't that the one that you usually have when you're, when you're doing a live video? So um, you know, use the tools out there that are available. I love the blur, by the way, and that's why we do that. I just think that looks really cool. But use the tools out there to help complement your presentation. And use storytelling techniques to help create memorable experiences. And it'll give yourself permission to be yourself and be unique. And you know what, while you're doing all of this, there's nothing wrong with laughing, having some fun, being engaging, and you know what, entertaining. And if you don't think entertainment matters, when you're channel surfing Netflix, when you're looking at podcasts, when you're on YouTube, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a boring video? Or are you looking for something that's going to knock your socks off? I mean, that's, that's exactly right. right. Fabulous. Yeah. Only a few questions left. This has been amazing. Yes. I, I'm um, not, I don't have a hard stop, so don't worry about it. You might, you might, but I don't. You know, I, I always say, as long as the value is there and as long as I'm engaged in, in listening to your amazing stuff, uh, we keep on going. So uh, it's you. But th this has been fabulous. Thank you for that. Thank you. So from a perspective of creating communities, I'm a huge believer in the power of communities. Mm -hmm. You've created your own legal mind community. I would love for you to talk about, first of all, what was the trigger in your mind that you said, it's time for me to create a community around my brand um, and invite some great, great minds into that. Uh, you're there just about multiple times a day, inviting yeah. people. I was uh, one of the presenters, but I'm, I'm amazed of truly what you were able to do and accomplish. So what I would like for you to maybe reflect on, first of all, what was the, tr the trigger to create this community? And why do you feel that communities such as the one, the group you've created, are important not just for your business, but possibly for others who are watching or listening to this podcast? I created the community because, as you know, I, I speak across the country at different conventions, at different conferences. And mm -hmm. what I noticed uh, at legal conventions is they were still talking about business marketing and branding approaches that worked 10 or 15 years ago, but, but not so much today. A lot of really out-of-date material and content. And uh, watching what I've been doing online and having a good feel for what works and understanding it's completely different than what was being shared. I thought to myself, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and set something up and just share my secret sauce mm -hmm. and, and see what happens. And I had some friends that had been asking me to do this for some time, Chad. So when I put the community together and it's, it's the legal, it's legal minds lawyer. That's the global mastermind. Um, they came in and everything, it's been almost four years now, three and a half, four years, everything kind of took off. But that was the reason behind it because what works today on social media is different than what people think direct marketing or marketing in general, you know, is or should be. That doesn't work on social media, you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad it doesn't work on social media. I've never liked doing that anyway. And so that was the reason behind it. I think community is everything whether before the internet, uh, building out a business, uh, participating 
in, in your local community, whether it's Rotary, whether it's the church, whatever it might be, um, being part of a community, I think that's human nature. That's what mm-hmm. human beings enjoy doing. It's what we need. It's in our DNA. And I think right now with social media communities, you can, you can connect with other people. They have a like interest. Uh, they have similar passions, the same businesses, the same hobbies. And, uh, you know, anyone out there that's thinking about uh, building better relationships, more potential referral sources, enjoying your day because you're other, around other people that are enjoying the conversation and enjoying sharing pictures and videos, I highly recommend you start a community. Now, I've got communities on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, my blogs. I mean, mm. they're all over the place. But what we did with Legal Minds is put it all in one place and <clears throat> we share really leading edge. So I speak at a lot of social media events, you know, that Tony Robbins the last couple of years, thank you to David Merriman Scott for inviting me on stage. But I'm around a lot of people that are brilliant like you that most lawyers don't run into, right? And so what I do is I bring all of you into legal minds and expose them to a whole new way of creating and sharing content. And lawyers are really smart human beings. Once they see this and they hear it the first time, they get it. You know, the light bulb goes on and they take off. We had a lawyer last year who's in the group who had never done a video before, Chad. And she challenged everybody in the group, let's do one video a day. And I'm already doing this, but you know, most people aren't. And she goes, let's do one video a day. That's the challenge. Who's in? So everybody raises their digital hand and everybody created video a day and shared it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, on their blog post, on their websites. By day three, and this is someone that's never done a video before, by day three, her videos, okay, just holding her camera up with her family behind her on the beach, her videos were better than most professionals that I've watched on social media the past eight or 10 years. Attorneys know how to communicate. They know how to stand in front of 12 strangers, a jury who you've never met before on a case you've been working on for four years and everything's gonna come down to what these 12 strangers think about you, your client, the facts and the evidence. And there's a lot of pressure. Well, if you're able to do that in a courtroom, why in the world can't you do that on Facebook and Twitter? And you can. And I was blown away at how good the content was when it comes to the qual- sharing answers to, to needs and really just entertaining their audiences. And um, so anyone out there, if you guys want to move forward right now and you're looking, what can, you know, I've got some extra time right now. Whether, you know, what can I do moving forward? I can comfortably tell you building a social media or digital community right now and start slow. It's a slow process um, is the way to go because it allows people to connect with you 24 seven when it works for them. It, it, It respects social distancing, social spacing. It allows you to build up a library of content. So in the community that Chad's talking about, we have what Facebook has what are called units. And when you click on a unit, you can drill down to three to four years worth of content, right? Mm. How to start your live video off, how to create a blog, how to set up your Twitter profile. So it's all there organized. And, you know, when I started, Chad, there was nothing there, right? Mm. I remember setting up a unit on Twitter, how to set up your Twitter profile. That was the single post in the unit. Who in the heck's going to want to come by and join this group? But it's, it's one of these things where you just kind of follow your heart and do what you enjoy doing. And, you know, 34 years of practicing law, I'm more excited today to get up and go into the office. Right now, we're all working from home. But to go into the office and practice law today, more excited today than I've ever been in my life. How many lawyers do you know that aren't completely burned out after 34 years. Right. And this tells me that the interaction that you and I have and we're having with the audience, the communities we're setting up, Facebook's a great place, whether you like Facebook or not, it's a great place for a community. Um, it makes business, it makes the practice of law fun again. I will tell everyone that in our community, if you're doing a Facebook community, think of your Facebook group as a house. And when people drive by the front of your house, they're looking at your front yard. And that's 
that's what people will see when they stop by your Facebook group before they become a member. They're looking at your front yard, a couple of pictures, a couple of posts. It's interesting. I wonder what it's like if I walk through the door. Mm. And when they walk into the door, they, they, they get exposed to a little bit more information, okay? When they go into the backyard, which is usually the paid or premium aspect of the community, that's where, you know, the gold is, is delivered. It's mm -hmm. in that backyard. And so it's an interesting dynamic that people can think about it that way, your front yard, your house, and your backyard. And when you set up your communities like this, 80% of my community is probably my front yard. And the other 20% is in, in the backyard, you know, and I'm okay with that. And it keeps it fun. Everybody's learning. Uh, everyone's engaging. Everybody's referring business to each other. And it's actually something that uh, we all look forward to on a daily basis. It's fun. That's great. So one more question before I ask you my final, final question. But, uh, you know, I've been talking for years about what I call web presence. And from my perspective, my definition of web presence are three primary components or pillars to web presence. Number one, the strategy. Um, and what I help my clients think through is how do they paint success? What's the buyer looks like? What are their preferences? What are the remarkable offerings they bring to the table? So first pillar is all about strategy. Second pillar, which we talked a lot about today, is the remarkable content. And the third one is the marketing initiatives. So that brings me to the next question I wanna ask you before we close. Sure. Um, what are some of your favorite marketing initiatives that you find to be successful? And I realize there not, may not be a silver bullet approach here that they, oftentimes people are looking for, but two parts to my question. Number one, what are some of your favorite marketing initiatives? And you mentioned TikTok, you mentioned Ecamm. Right. What are some of your favorite technologies or platform to use mm -hmm. that you've seen to, to gen generate success? So marketing initiatives and technologies or platforms, your favorites that you've been using? So I wish we had started with this because I want to make sure your, your viewers hear this. It's BombBomb, B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B. BombBomb is a service, it's a paid service, it's not expensive, um, that allows me to, in, to create and embed a video in my email. So instead of me emailing Chad, I just click Chad in my email. Uh, uh, I use Gmail and it works in anything and you click a button and the video comes up and I say, hey Chad, it's Smith. Just wanted to get back and let you know we're all set for court tomorrow. Don't worry about a thing. I've got it covered. We're gonna kick their butt. If you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise I'll see you down at the courthouse at eight during the morning, we're done. That's how fast it is. And it sends Chad a high definition, high quality, high audio video. So Chad, that by far has been just something that's just knocked the socks off of our clients, opposing counsel in the past. Mm. I would pick up the phone if I didn't know opposing counsel and just chat. Wouldn't talk about the case. I just wanted to reach out. Chad, just introduce myself, let you know, regardless of where, where we end up on this case, I'm looking forward to reaching, you know, to working with you to some type of final resolution, either by settlement or jury verdict. Either way, it's nothing personal. Um, now I'm sending a bomb bomb video along those same lines and bomb bomb allows you to monitor how many times it's been opened up. So I may send this to one lawyer and 30 minutes later, it's got 50 or 60 opens where mm. he or she has circulated it among the law firm because it's so unique. That's so to me, it's marketing my brand. It's getting my name out there at this other law firm. And it's also standing out to this lawyer. Um, you know, I, I've had lawyers say, well, aren't you, why would you send a video? Aren't you worried about what other people are going to think? Well, I'd like to think that I come across the way I want to come across in this video. You can record a video and if you don't like it, you can re-record it before you send it. Okay. That's been a very powerful tool along the same lines, live video, Chad, live video is a game breaker. There's something about looking somebody in the digital eyeballs and connecting, uh, in a way that's really difficult otherwise to connect with someone, especially in today's world where we yes. have social distancing. So I think platforms like Zoom, platforms like StreamYard, which is what I use for my weekly Wednesday night live video show. 
S-T-R-E-A-M-Y-A-R-D. It's a show, it's a platform that allows you to do a talk show and have bottom one thirds to bring in videos, to bring in pictures. It's almost like watching the evening. It's almost like watching Oprah or Ellen where you can have that type of talk show. Everybody can be at their own location. And when I click go live on StreamYard, Chad, uh, my show goes out instantly at the same time live to YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, LinkedIn, Facebook groups. If I have the code embedded, it'll go to my blog post, my website, all with one click. So I'm able to touch all of my various audiences. And then through the method of, ha of hosting the show, inviting people over to a particular Facebook page, inviting people to stay con in contact with me by going to Wednesday night legal marketing live, you know, participating in the live video a certain way is super important, but this technology really does give you a head start from the type of technology we had just three or four years ago. I will say in StreamYard, what's, what's very cool. And we talked about engagement is over on the right in the admin panel, as people are commenting on Facebook and YouTube and on Periscope and in the Facebook groups, it's all coming up in one feed to mm -hmm. my right. So in real time, I'm looking at the comments. I can, I can talk about the comments. I can click and bring the question in underneath you if you're my guest mm -hmm. and we can answer the question live. So it, it, it allows for a very interactive real time mm -hmm live video experience, those would be a couple of platforms that I would encourage all of your viewers to check out, to play around with, and to start using on a regular basis. And if they do, they're probably going to position themselves to stand out from everyone else in town and be top of mind the next time a client, a patient, or a customer needs his or her services. This is fabulous. And also say, first of all, uh, Thank you for all this information. And uh, one of the things that I want to ask you, for those who are interested in following you up, finding out more about what Midjection does, all the amazing things you share with us today, what's the best way to connect with you? What's the best way to possibly even consider joining your uh, private group if possible? Uh, sure. Talk a little bit about uh, best methods to connect with you and uh, learn from you. Thank you, Chad. I, I appreciate that. If, if for no other reason, to give you confidence. When you watch what I'm doing, you're going to think to yourself, wow, if Mitch can pull this off, I can too. So uh, most of my non-legal social media blogging and things like that, it's over at streaming.lawyer. Think of live streaming, it's streaming.lawyer. Our law firm is jacksonandwilson.com. If people would like to connect uh, and check out the mastermind, and, and, uh, and see what else I'm doing on all the different social media platforms. If you go to streaming.lawyer, most of the links are right there. Here's a little secret, Chad. We set up a, uh, a site, it's mitch.social, and anybody can do this. You go to mitch.social and it will take you to all of my social media links. If you're on LinkedIn, let's connect. If you're on Twitter, let's connect. If you're on TikTok, let's connect, and I wanna see your TikToks. So keep it simple for your clients, your, prospect, your prospective clients, and your online audience to stay connected with you. And for me, everything's over at streaming.lawyer. And I'm looking forward to answering questions. I'm looking forward to engaging with those of you that want to learn more about all of this. And, uh, you know, hang in there. This is an interesting time. I'll tell you, I'm old enough to have been around during Black Monday in 1987. I was around at the end of the 90s when the market uh, really went south. I was around in 2008 when um, we had the uh, financial crisis and I'm here today and I can tell you there is light at the end of the tunnel. I can tell you this is the time to be proactive and, and, and exhibit whatever leadership uh, you have, depending on the amount of energy that you have and to take your client's hands and let them know it's going to be okay and to keep moving forward. Opportunity exists today and I think digital cloud-based solutions allow us to maximize those opportunities. So Chad, thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Mitch, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, for being a guest on the show, and for helping me as in the name of the show to raise the bar and to help all of us uh, learn from you, from your wisdom, from your experience, from all your knowledge, to help us raise the bar and create a sense of hope 
especially in this time of crisis. And hopefully by the time uh, a few weeks from now, we'll be beyond this crisis maybe. Uh, but thank you for sharing all that you shared today. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.